It's time for some insane precision with 6GT. In this video, I'm gonna cover the entire process from start to finish. Gavin Gu here from ultimatereloader.com. That's right, you've seen my 6GT kickoff, barrel work and initial load development. That means it's time to do some detailed, in-depth precision loads, and we're gonna go up to the ridge line and do some long range shooting. Before we get into the reloading, let's do a quick recap of this project. This rifle turned out great. It's built on a BAT TR action. I've got the MDT ACC short action chassis system. I've got a Krieger 28 inch finished barrel in one and seven and a half twist that we did an ultra precision chambering on and we did a muzzle threading. Right now, I'm using the EC tuner brake. Uh, for tools, we got the Precision Matthews TL1660 lathe. I used the SSG true bore alignment system, the SSG range rods to do the indication on the barrel. We're using an Alpha 6GT carbide reamer with 170 free bore and a Dave Manson 6GT go gauge. We also used some scotch tape on the back to add two thousandths of an inch for our no-go gauge. And for the initial load development, now I'm not considering this really done. The load development can't really be done until the barrel is fully broken in. I think at about the 200 to 250 round range, we'll be able to do a further pass of fine tuning. But for initial loads, I looked at the Hornady 110 grain A-tip, and we looked at the 109 Burger Long Range Hybrid, which has been a really good performer in the 6-dasher as well. 6GT is much like the 6-dasher, but it's about a tenth of an inch longer, and that means it doesn't need as much special attention when it comes to feeding out of standard AICS magazines. Yes, you'll get a little bit more velocity. That wasn't really the point. And that's what I've found so far. These 6GT rounds, they feed really well. Uh, the load that I chose to focus on for our long range steel shooting is the 34.6 grains of Varget with the Burger 109. I've got federal small rifle primers and out of our 28 inch barrel that yielded over 3000 feet per second, 3004.6. We've got a standard deviation of 10.3 and an extreme spread of 15. As I mentioned, when I get to that 200 to 250 round range in the break-in cycle, we're gonna take another pass at this load development and I'm expecting we're gonna see things tighten up. This load is sub half MOA. I was in the threes on MOA uh, on the tight side and in the fours kind of as a, a more average. So again, as I go through adjusting seating depth and as I go through fine tuning the powder, I might find a lower node that I want to use that's going to be maybe a little bit more accurate. These are things that I'm going to take a, a look at in the next phase. I'm also going to look at my star performer for 6 Dasher, which is the Burger 105s. So that's kind of a setting of the stage. That's our background information. Next, I want to walk you through the equipment I used for this super precision reloading. So let's go through everything on my bench here from left to right. So I have the ultra micrometer seeder for 6GT, and then I had Forrester do a custom honed full length sizer die. I really like these because they're really, really good in ensuring absolute optimal concentricity. And for this, we did a little calculation with the alpha 6GT brass that I'm using, and we ended up with a 265 neck area in the sizer. So if you were picking a bushing in a bushing die, that 265 die in this particular case should work really well. The ultra micrometer seeder has the scale right on here. And then of course you can click thousandth at a time. It doesn't actually click, it's smooth. But you can see uh, with one thousandth accuracy, even, even better than, than that actually. The Forrester coax I've got set up with the individual jaws that are self-contained, which are, are really nice. I've got the, the large on there for the 308 case rim that we've got. The, the nice thing about the Forrester coax is, is a couple things. It's got the, the built-in priming and you can adjust the, the little fingers on the top 
and it'll work for large or small and kind of any case rim diameter. So it's a, a universal setup and you don't need shell holders because of the universal jaws. There's also float in the dies and float at the bottom for optimal self alignment and the dies pop in and out really quickly. You just kind of push them into the slot and they're ready to go. And then we've got the Forster Benchrest powder measure. We've got the a and FX120i. This is a 0 0.02 grain scale. I get these from Cambridge Environmental. They're our official scale partner. They've got a bunch of different scales that you can use for different things, including automatic powder dispensers. I'm using the Hornady Trickler. I've got a couple things from Area 419 here. Their loading block and their master funnel kit. These have got different kind of inserts that you can screw on the end there and they have the, the perfect opening and step for the case neck, and that's really nice. Imperial case lube, that's the Imperial case sizing wax. I'm using an, a Sinclair concentricity gauge to check my run out. We've got some really re good results I'll talk about in a little bit. The Forster datum dial, so this I used to check my shoulder bump, but you can also use it to uh, measure your base to O drive for bullet seating depth. We've got the Henderson V3 trimmer. This thing is amazing. It is really smooth and it puts a nice three-way inside, outside chamfer and trim to length all in one step. Really, really nicely machined and I was holding really tight tolerances uh, for this trimming. It gives me the right result. It's easy to set up and adjust and it's really quick to use. The Forster neck tension gauge kit. This thing is cool. After you've done your sizing or mandrel or expander ball, you can put your case on there and see exactly where you're gonna land. I haven't sized this one yet, so it kind of goes all the way. So it's kind of a go, no-go model. It just, it just keeps going until it stops and then you know that you're smaller. You're between the two, the, the one that it went over and the one that it stopped up against. And it turned out, <laughs> The way they honed the die was absolutely perfect. Again, we'll get to that when we talk about sizing. Couple things from Primal Rights. I've got the Competition Primer Seeder and the Prime Wear. The Prime Wear is used to check your seeding depth. And then we've got the Mark II annealer. This is an inductive annealer from Annealing Made Perfect. And this is what I use to analyze and anneal the cases. Okay, that's kind of a lot of equipment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is a really great setup if you care about utmost quality of your ammunition and precision in your shooting. So I want to talk about kind of the process real quick before we get into it. So I started with an analyze pass on the, the case to know what annealing settings to use. It produces a code. What this does, you can kind of see this here on the case neck, is it brings the case neck to the yielding point where it's just about to completely <laughs> liquefy. And the machine with Aztec technology has the ability to then calculate what is the optimal annealing duration and heat and all of the different parameters, which is captured as a code. I've got bushing number 73. These screw out of the machine and are used to locate the case for optimal annealing. So I started with the annealing, the analyze pass. I've got clean brass. It gets annealed and then sized. So the annealing affects the sizing. You're not gonna get spring back like you do with typical once fired or, or multiple fired brass. When you size it, it's gonna lengthen a little bit. I, I had about three and a half thousandths of lengthening when I sized this first time after the first firing. Then we go ahead and trim, and then we prime, charge with powder, and seat the bullet, and we end up with a finished cartridge like this. So, next, I'm gonna go through that entire process from start to finish. So, I've already loaded 25 rounds of ammunition, and we're gonna do five as a part of this process. So, I tumbled the brass in walnut shell media, it's clean now, and that means we're ready to anneal. And something new that, that I've been doing is using these tin cans. 
so that I can have my unannealed and annealed buckets. And obviously, since it's metal, we don't have to worry about anything. So I've turned the machine on. We're going to go ahead and select our last code, which is 137, which is what we got from the analyze pass. And then we just hit start. It glows red. When it's done, it tells us that we're done. We're going to go ahead and go through the rest. Kneeling is done. Now we're going to let those cool off for a little bit. So I took a few minutes to let the brass cool off after the annealing. We've got it back in the loading block. And I'm going to use this imperial case sizing wax. We're going to put some on the outside of the case. And then I'll also use a Q-tip to get it on the inside of the case neck. And that's going to make ensure that the expander ball glides through the brass and we don't have a lot of problems. Okay, so we've got the honed full length sizer. We've got our decapping pin adjusted out the bottom and I've already checked. I've got about a thousandth and a half of shoulder bump here from our fired brass state, which is going to be just right. And one thing I noticed though, when I was doing this sizing, and I noticed it right there, I've got a little bit of drawback going on with these. Okay, so that popped out. So what I discovered was, there we go, we got a nice tinkle sound, if you will, down into the cup there, is if you, if you don't get that sound and you don't have your primer poked out the bottom, sometimes you just go down a little bit like that until the decapping pin punches it again and it'll, like that. Do it one more time, see that? Now we got uh, our primer poked out. I'm now gonna take a moment to wipe off the case lube. This is just one of those things, and, and this is why, one of the reasons why I like the Imperial. Uh, first off, it does a great job with friction during the sizing process, and second, it's really easy to remove compared to some of the spray-on products. I use lanolin sometimes. Downside there is that it just gets really sticky. So this takes a while, but for a batch of ammunition of this size, it's well worth it. Okay, so now that we've got things sized and our brass has lengthened a little bit, let's look at trimming. So you're going to want to check out my full video on the Henderson V3. I talk about six dasher, which is very similar to this. Show the adjustment of the blades. You can actually adjust the inside and outside chamfer independently and how to remove one head and put another head on, that kind of thing. So I took the opportunity to set this up and I have my trim to length at 1.709 inches which is about 20 below the maximum spec. That's kind of where I like to be. It gives me a little bit of headroom. I'll probably get at least a few firings before we even need to think about trimming again. So we're going to turn the machine on. There's a collet here. I like to push back into it to seat it and then we just push until it stops cutting an absolutely perfect bright ring there. It's actually a very satisfying process. And this can, when we have a good chamfer inside and outside, uh, prevent scraping on the bullet and also enhance feeding. So even if you have like an AR, a precision AR, and you wanna have the best possible feeding, this is gonna help a little bit with that, which is pretty cool. So there's five cases. Once you get into the groove, it's pretty fast. Now that we're sized and we have a really nice chamfer on these cases, I'm gonna use the, the Forster neck tension gauge. And this is the six millimeter one. There's a, a bunch of different ones that you can get in a set if you want. And these go at 239, 240, 241, and 242. So when we slide this in here, we're gonna, I feel a little resistance. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't go over the 242, but it goes over the 241. So we're just under 242, and bullet diameter for six millimeter is 243. So we have about a thousandth neck tension, which is absolutely perfect. That is an excellent result. Next, we're ready for priming. 
So again, here we're using the Competition Primer Cedar and the Primer, both from Primal Rights. And this is an industrial grade, ultra precision priming setup. Every time I go to prime, I like to confirm with the components I'm using what my primer seating depth looks like. It looks like we're about negative one right there. That's about right between negative one and negative two. That's below the surface of the case rim. I've, I've had issues with primers that aren't completely seated. And of course you can get light strikes as your you know firing pin pushes the primer further in rather than impacting it with full force. So there we go, we've got five cases primed. Now it's time to go over and charge with powder. The Andy FX120i isn't a scale, it's actually a precision laboratory balance and its resolution, 0 0.02 grains, happens to be what one of these granules of Varget weighs. So this is a very precise way to do your powder charges. So I've got it zeroed out on the pan. We're gonna do a bulk charge with the Forrester Benchrest powder measure. We're at 34.3, so we just need 0.3 grains to come up to 0.6. And what I'm gonna do is I am gonna be plus or minus 0.02 on this. That's my typical tolerance. So I'll go ahead and finish this up and we'll be on to bullet seating. Okay, done with powder charging, let's see some bullets. So we're gonna remove the full length sizer, insert the ultra micrometer seeder. I've already set the bullet seating depth. I think in precision loads, this is, this is the fun part. <laughs> I don't know why, but bullet seating is just something that brings me a lot of satisfaction. And I think it's also, I know I'm just about ready to go out and shoot. And there's something about that that I, I really like. Get pumped up, get ready to hit some steel at range. That is what it's about at the end of the day is hitting the target. All right, so reclaim my example round here. I've got 30 rounds of ammunition. I think I'm gonna try this out. Looks like a center punch to me. Man, I think it's just a precision instrument. Let's go out a little further. So I used the shooter app. I calculated 3.9 come up on this. I've got my Hawkins rings. I'm nice and level now. I just have to find the target. Oh, not quite level there. Got to check. There we are. Got to tighten my grip. <laughs> That's three for three. That is a great feeling. Right on target. All right, we're up seven. We already got on target. First, first shot, we're only about four inches from the center. That's some pretty good dope, I would say. I'm going to send another one. Yep, impact. Impact. 
impact. Wind has shifted a little bit. I'm gonna hold right of center. Nice. We're slamming it. And another impact down a little bit. I'm going to try for the smaller target here. We're going to be right there. Impact. <laughs> wow. That small target is like a 10 by 10 approximately. It's an upside down IPSC. This rifle is amazing and 6GT is phenomenal. Hardly any recoil. Love the rifle, love the cartridge. And obviously this precision ammunition that we loaded is just spot on. I am jacked up. This has been an absolutely awesome Ridgeline shooting experience. We haven't been able to shoot up here because of fire danger. Now we got the snow, we're having fun up here. We were at 340, we were at 706, and then 1,000. And this rifle, first round hit at 1,000, about four inches off center, and six out of six, including our smaller target. What does that mean? It means 6GT is absolutely awesome. I absolutely love this rifle build. The MDT triple pole bipod on here was absolutely awesome. My first chance to really use the trace, the Zerotech trace scope at distance at 27 power. We were looking really good at 1,000. I couldn't be happier. And what a better way to try out our precision ammunition than on steel at distance. Here's what I want to know is what did you think of our precision loads, equipment, and process? What do you think of this rifle? And what do you think of this beautiful mountaintop setting we're shooting from? Drop a comment and start a discussion. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you're interested in becoming a professional gunsmith, check out the Sonoran Desert Institute. They've got a degree program, they've got a certificate program, and you can study from home. Learn more at sdi.edu. Thanks again for watching.